everyone. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make it look as if you're writing out some copy. Um, so in this, I'm going to just click on the um, text tool, and you can see I've made a new composition here. It's 1920 by 1080. And I'm just going to type in something. Right, I'll just do Rollins here. Um, and I'm going to make this pretty big um, just to show you how to do it. But you can always, of course, um, just zoom in to uh, to make it smaller if you want to. Um, if you want to have just, let's say, a lower third or something um, right on the text. So um, so here I've got uh, this Rollins piece here. Um, and this is actually a pretty easy effect. It's very similar to highlighting text or making a, a line graph. We're going to use the uh, stroke effect. Now, to do that, uh, we are not going to make a new solid. In fact, what we're going to do is this text layer as basically a solid. Um, and you can see that there's a lot of different um, applications for this. But, um, of course, you want to use something that looks like script. I've used uh, Viner Hand here, but there's many others, Papyrus, etc. Um, and then I'm just going to go to Effect, and then Generate, and then Stroke, um, just like you would normally do here. Um, you're going to need to really mess with your brush size and all of this, but um, at this point I don't want to worry about that. What I do want to do is go ahead and make my path or, or my mask. And I want to follow this in the same way that I would um, do this if I was writing it out. So um, you can do this multiple masks, but in this case I'm going to um, simply start. I would go up and then let's say down and over here. Um, and then I might go back up and go in edges here. So you can see that I'm actually going a little further um, than I would normally go. What I'm trying to avoid is overlapping other bits of this with these edges. Um, I really want to make this look as if I'm, I'm starting off. Um, you can actually um, adjust these um, individually here. Um, so you can see that I just made a mistake there. I closed my, my mask, um, but I was too close to this. So I want to do is really um, you know, start a little further away and then I can adjust this in. Um, you can adjust these to make it look like there's a curve as well um, by holding down Alt. Um, and then you can, you can actually curve um, this edge around if you choose to, um, to make it look like it's, it's actually a, going in a circle as opposed to these straight edges. And that often works really well. So what I'm going to do is just keep clicking here um, and again trying to make this look to overlap it as much as I can, um, but to really follow what I would do if I were writing by hand. Um, and you can see with this um, little dot here for the eye, that might be a little difficult. Um, but basically, you're just following these curves and, and use as many points um, of the path as you need to um, to make this look exactly the way you want it to look. And like I said, if you were to do a really detailed job here, you probably would go ahead um, and make curves instead of having a bunch of little points here. But you get the idea. This is all one mask. Um, so once this is done, you want to go back through and um, have it follow your mask one. If you use multiple masks, let's say there's multiple little pieces, let's say there's a, an exclamation point or something you'd want to have um, as a separate mask, uh, then you would say usually all masks and, and strokes sequen sequentially. But in this case, I just want mask one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and have this reveal my original image um, and you can see that everything seems to disappear. So what I need to do is to um, go ahead and oops, um, go ahead and increase my brush size and you can see that as I increase this it reveals more and more of the piece and that's that's about enough that's all I need. Um, and you might want to play with this. You might actually want to animate your brush size. Uh, let's say if you come in a little bit too close here and it starts to reveal part of the other piece here. Um, so this is finished. I'm going to go in around two seconds. I'm going to um, animate my endpoint. And then I'm going to go back to the beginning. And I'm going to reduce this down to 0%. So as I scroll up, so I can press spacebar, you can see that it basically looks like it is writing the piece on. It's actually a pretty nice effect and really surprisingly simple. Good luck. Hey everyone, this is Eran with another A to Z effect in the effect A to Z series. This one will be a little bit longer than usual because this is 
pretty heavy effect. One of my favorite actually in the whole uh, simulation category of After Effects and this is the caustics effect. Now, towards the end of this, I will refer you to more resources which you can find out about this effect, but let's start very quickly and try to understand the purpose and the meaning of the caustics effect. In order to apply the effect, we'll create a new solid layer. This is just for quick demonstration. And then under effect simulation, I will apply the caustics effect. Now the effect actually asks us to input three sources, one for the bottom, one for the water, and the other one for the sky. Now the logic here is that this effect is trying to emulate the light rays that are reflected or refracted by some kind of a surface or an object. These tiny lights, when actually you can see them, if you are standing, let's say, on a top of a swimming pool or some kind of a watery surface looking down. So you can actually see the bottom through the water and maybe also some kind of a sky reflection. We also have access to lighting and material and I will touch on those two a little bit later. But I want to explain fairly quickly the principle of how we can create something which looks kind of a, of a caustics effect. So let's start with those three compositions which I've already prepared ahead of time. And here, this is the first one. This is our bottom composition. And you can see a small gray square texture here, which I'm going to quickly apply the bevel edge effect just in order for us to get some kind of uh, maybe a start of a floor. And if we want to duplicate it, we can apply the CC repertile effect when this one is basically just going to repeat it in the fashion of the tiling that we are defining here. So this will be our basic floor. Now let's come back to the project and drag down the bottom to our caustics composition. And we can now delete the black solid. Now let's select the bottom and reapply the caustics effect. And now you can see that as before, it tries to colorize the floor to some kind of a watery tint, then this is the surface color. However, it doesn't do anything yet because we need to define some kind of a watery surface. And this is the strength of the effect, some kind of a displacement source in order for the effect to work. Now we will start with something fairly simple. And then I will show you a complex advanced example later. So let's go to our water composition. There is nothing here yet. So let's quickly create a new solid. And I just want to create some kind of a grayscale image that moves in order to plug it as a displacement source. So the fastest way to go here, I think, is under noise and grain, fractal noise, I'm going to quickly change it to Swirly and maybe open the transform here, change the scale to three, not 30, but 300. So we'll get bigger Swirlies here and also animate the evolution using a simple expression time, maybe 50. So this is what we have. This will be our basic distortion map. Now, every time you are building some kind of a distortion map, it is a wise idea to try and blur it a little bit. So I'm going to the effect blur and sharpen, going to apply the fast blur effect, maybe blur it, let's say 40 pixels and repeat the edge pixels. And now let's return to the caustics composition, drag down our water surface and turn off the eye for it. Now reselect the bottom, go back to the caustics effect and under water surface, I'm going to define the water as a displacement source, as a water surface. Now I'm going to initiate the RAM preview just so you can see the default behavior and you can already start to see what I'm talking about. It almost feels like we are looking down to some kind of a watery surface. Now we can blur the bottom a little bit to get a better result. So maybe something around 0.5. And then we can play with the wave parameter. So we can turn the wave height a little bit higher if we need. 
we can also try to smooth it so maybe something like this and also we can turn the water depth a little bit deeper there is also a refractive index so different materials have different refractive index and of course there is surface color which you can define and opacity and strength i will play with those parameters immediately but i just want to show you just by modifying the wave height and smoothing that this already starts to look very realistic very natural now, of course you have to play with those numbers in order to get a finer or better result i'm just going to reset it for a moment because I quickly want to speak about the sky here and the sky is an optional thing which you can add to your composition so if you want to see the reflection of the sky from above we can define a sky for it there is already a composition here with a video of clouds and in order to not overwhelm the design I recommend to tint the colors of the sky because we don't want too many colors here. So I'm going to effect color correction and let's apply the tint effect. And I'm also going to map the white here to a mid gray, just in order to once again, not uh, exaggerate with the design. Now I'm going to drag the sky composition to the caustics one, turn off the eye for it. And once again, I'm going to reselect the bottom and then define that the sky is now part of this composition and you can play with the intensity of the sky if you want to see them a little bit clearer or even the convergence which will yield this nice effect and of course you can also play with scaling and repeat mode and change the layer size if it differs from the layers that you are using now a basic uh, recommendation when you are using this kind of plugins and this is true for most of the displacement uh, effect inside after effects always use the same dimensions and also the same pixel aspect ratio in order to get an expected results from the plugin now here we can also define a different kind of lighting you can choose between the default distance source with all its parameters and you can also define a point source which I find to be a little bit uh, better in most situations and of course you can also use the first comp light if you have one let's leave it like this with the distant source I just want to show you that you also have an options to control the material reflection specular reflection highlight sharpness once again you have to play with those settings in order to find out which ones work best for you for now I'm just going to maybe turn the wave height a little bit bigger and turn on a little bit more smoothing and just create once again a quick run preview so we can see what we've managed to achieve with this basic setup. Okay, it kind of look nice, but it's, as I said, very basic. This effect can yield much more realistic result with a little bit more of a fine tuning and in order to achieve this you must prepare a better water surface distortion layer this is the most important ingredients for this recipe to work so let's come back to our water composition and instead of using the fractal noise with the fast blur effects I'm going to highlight and delete them and actually I'm going to use the companion effect which was originally designed for creating a watery displacement source for the caustics you can find it in the same category it's under the simulation category it's all the way towards the end and it's called wave world now at first glance this effect looks kind of strange i'm not going to cover this effect here as well because this is not a wave world tip but I'm quickly going to show you what you need to do in order to create something interesting. So I'm going to first change it to height map. So we can see that we have some kind of a pulse on the screen. Then it is very important to open up the simulation and change the grid resolution from 40 to something much higher. I'm going to start with 150, which gives us much finer details. Now I'm going to open up the producer here 
and I'm just going to animate the middle of the ring here. So let's start from the top left corner, press here to record a position keyframe, make sure it, it is at the beginning of our composition, go to the end and pull it all the way down to the right corner. So this is what we have until now. I know it doesn't look so promising. Let's also change here the reflect edges to all. So every time the wave will meet one of the corners, it will bounce back, it will reflect the edges. And quickly I'm going to demonstrate how it looks from this view. And this will serve as a much better displacement source for caustics. So this is all we need to do here, actually. Let's return to our caustics and I will hit the zero button on the numlock just to initiate a new RAM preview for you to see how this looks. Now using the designed wave world effect in order to create a displacement source for it, a displacement map. And this looks very believable. This almost looks like there is some kind of a water which is traveling on top of this surface. Of course, we can do a lot in order to make it look even better. First thing, we can add the water layer back to the scene, but this time let's choose an overlay blending mode. This will bring a little bit more of a shadows to the whole look. Now, of course, you can raise the caustics strength if you like. And then, of course, you can change the surface opacity in order to desaturate the colors or, if you like, completely disable the bottom and only left with this very impressive watery, almost like a paint look. And I'm a big fan of this effect, as I told you before. This is one of my favorite effects in all After Effects. So we can do a lot with these displacement techniques. And let me just quickly show you what else we can do. I'm going to turn off the sky for now and maybe just change back the surface opacity so we can see through the bottom a little bit. Now I'm going to come back to my water here and I'm going to unshy my shape layer here and I'm going to raise it up. Now this is a shape layer of my logo and just so you can see what I'm doing here, I'm going to select the S shape and this is the path for it and you can see that we have a thin stroke for the shape of the S and for the circle. This is just one pixel of a gray, mid-gray stroke. Now I want to quickly integrate this logo into the scene so it will look like there is some kind of a movement through the caustics and the water effect. In order to do so, I'm going to select the S and add few operators. I'm going to start with the trim path here, open it up, and then let's start from maybe here zero, and over the course of maybe three seconds, I'm going to offset the path so it will draw the shape of the circle. Then I'm going to maybe add a wiggle path operator and let's open it up, change the size here a little bit and also let's add a round corners. So this will by itself look like it is some kind of a watery, it has some kind of a watery feel to it. Okay, I think it looks quite interesting. So I'm going to select my trim path, wiggle path and round corners, copy them, then just paste them to the circle as well. So we'll have both elements working together. Okay, now remember this is on top of our wave world effect and I've already changed the blending mode of the logo to use the darken mode. So this means that if we are going to play it together, we can see that we can sometimes see it and sometimes not due to the mixture between the colors, the gray colors. 
As before, this by itself doesn't look so impressive, but when we are plugging it to our caustics effect, and maybe let's play a little bit with the wave height here. I don't think that we need it to be so much. So let's take a look at what we've managed to achieve just by playing a little bit with those parameters. And I think this looks pretty interesting just by using this combination of effect. We can almost see the logo, partly there, partly not. And of course we can always try to change the lighting condition of the scene, maybe give it a different intensity, or you can always play with the surface opacity just to desaturate the colors. If you go the other way and make the floor completely disappear, you can actually come up with a very impressive look. Look at this. Wow, I think this is something which most users will find hard to believe that it is done entirely with After Effects. Of course, we can change the colors here, so maybe a darker tint will look even better. Let's bring back the floor and maybe just show the logo a little bit. So coming back to our bottom, I will unshy another instance of my logo here and let's quickly animate the opacity of it. I think that first of all we will use it as an overlay blending mode so it will seem like it is painted to the floor. I'm going to maybe lower the opacity to not more than 50% and just give it keyframe here from 0 to maybe 50 over several seconds and then Let's just keep it like this and fade it away. Hopefully I'm getting the timing correctly. This should start here. So coming back to our composition and just dragging the keyframes. So we will be a little bit better in terms of timing. Okay, coming back here and see, there we have it. So once again, short run preview and this is the speed of it i don't want to pause the recording i just want you to see how easy it is and how fast it behaves so just wonderful stuff this tutorial is a little bit longer than what i expected it to be however you can see that we only scratch the surface of the effect and what it can do for us if you want to learn more I'm going to suggest visiting my website, sternfix.com, and here under search, just plug in the word caustics, and you will get few tutorials, which I'm going to explain a little bit in depth how to use this effect in combination of other stuff and create a wonderful effects, I think. And if you want to learn more about working with WaveWorld and Caustics, make sure to check my Motion Design with After Effects DVD, which you can purchase directly from the site. There is a lesson here called Liquid Logo. If I'm going to return to After Effects here under my project settings, I already imported the Liquid Logo composition. I'm just going to create a ramp preview for you so you can see, and maybe of course, play it for you full frame. And in this example, you will learn how to actually affect the wave world with some kind of a bumpiness surface. As you can see, this is my name here. So it will take the techniques that I showed you a step further and as you can see from the result, the effect is very ergonomic, very natural, looks very impressive just using After Effects. Once again, one of my favorites. So hopefully you learned few things and got few ideas from this nice effect. And until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for Motion Work saying goodbye.